This is an ordinary 1970s university campus in Edinburgh. But inside, there is a touch of the future. So, I mean, this is a relatively simple uh, installation on Windows 7, but Windows 7 is nice because it has multi-touch capability right through the operating system. Um, all of the walls are actually driven by Macs because it allows us to triple boot into Windows, um, Mac OS X, and also several flavors of Linux. Um, and that's because we're doing development work cross-platform. One of the things we want to do is try and be platform agnostic. Um, well, let's break a room into zones. So if we want to have something, we can just have a large, easy to see, easy to use, and touch enabled uh, surface. And so we have another one here, we have more around the walls, and we have this um, tabletop as well. This is um, a dual touch um, overlay, so across a standard 42 inch LCD. What it allows us to do is it really allows us to reconceptualize um, the way that we deal with computer information. So normally we think about it right going, right, it's a discrete thing, it's an object, it's a computer, and the information is inside it. We think of these as windows. These are windows to information. Where the computer is, is kind of irrelevant. Now the interesting thing is the way that we do this is we actually use something called TUIO. Now TUIO stands for Tangible User Interface Object. What it really means is saying, I can detect this finger touch and this finger touch, and more importantly, these simultaneous finger touches, so we can scale things up and scale things down. But why multi-touch is important is it allows more than one person to deal with the same thing simultaneously. The tables are probably a better demo of that. Well, I mean, like I say, multi-touch has been around since the 80s and people have been looking at tabletops, but typically what you see is something like this, where the two of us are looking at things um, from the same side, not when it's all around 360. The other thing about this room is it's not just about having a tabletop or not just about having a multi-touch screen, it's about how these coexist. Correct. So it's how we move from one to the other. What is the task that I'm trying to do when I'm here? What's the task I'm trying to do when I'm here? So when we have things like, for example, um, we want to have a collaborative meeting with someone who's not actually even in the room, how do we do that? So one of the things, if we use this TUIO um, protocol, what we're doing is actually sending the information from one computer here, which is doing the blob detection, which is sending over IP to the other computer here. But that computer could be anywhere. You know, if I'm looking at a video, I can just turn it on, we can just sort of scan through it. That's the James Bond movie. Yeah, yeah. so if we, if we want to be looking at um, this is James Bond's version of, uh, of the table, except <laughs> he's demonstrating something that's not quite real. <laughs> and then if I want to show someone over there, I just flip it around and I can pass it over to them. And then depending on what it is we want to look at, we can actually just scan through your information really quickly and we can scale through things. Mod Touch allows us to move through the granularity of stuff, from seeing lots and lots of things to moving right in and saying, let's look at this in detail. And that's very, very powerful. You can be doing that simultaneously whilst I do this over here. So, here is the building we're in at the moment. And if we keep zooming in, you see this here? This is actually a greenhouse which is directly above, yes, yes, yes. above us right now. Um, you can actually see the students sort of gathering around outside there. And this is where we're going to be having our, our new notice board downstairs. Any way you write on the wall um, is actually digitally captured. But the process of initiating the digital capture is not you go to the uh, wall when you, you you start up an application because people don't know which application to start up. Mm. And that's crazy. People come to the room and say, I don't know how to use a room. That's why so many you know, so-called smart meeting rooms fail because mm -hmm. people just don't know what they're doing. Here we're just saying, right, well, I want to write on the walls. Let's start writing on the walls. So if you want to have a brainstorm, you want to say, right, what are the things we need to do? What happens is that process is what starts this process and it's digitally captured. Now, what typically happens in video conferencing is someone goes, right, uh, I need to make sure that you've got the same software I have. I need to make sure that you've got the same setup I have. It's a very formal process, and they are, oh, sorry, yeah, we've got incompatible systems, and that's crazy. So what we say is, no, let's get that out of the way. What you need is a web browser, which is cross-platform, goes on everything, and you just put in a URL, and put in your name, and bang, you're connected into the room. And that's kind of representing the philosophy. The technology is not really the issue. That's not what's exciting. It's what it lets us do that's really exciting.